Welcome to Mission Sunlight from the Euro-Asia Division. Today we will visit two remote sites and learn about the need for church buildings in Azerbaijan and Siberia. Facing unique but different challenges, our church family in these areas are finding ways to continue to tell the story of Jesus in spite of hardships and sometimes even harsher consequences. When you hear the name Siberia, what pictures do you imagine? A vast, desolate territory of unrelenting, cold, harsh winters? Can you imagine an individual volunteering to spend time in Siberia? Meet Vasily Midvid, pastor of the Tomsk Church in Siberia. I became an Adventist in 1980. I made this decision because I found that the churches teach exactly what the scriptures teach. After being baptized, I urgently prayed that God would reveal His will to me. I wanted to serve. I wanted to be a minister. Vasily eventually met Pastor Paul Jimenez, who invited him to join him on a mission trip to Siberia. During his visit to Siberia, Vasily learned there were not many Seventh-day Adventists in the region. He knew he had only one choice to make. I decided that this is the place for me to minister, so I started as a missionary in Russia. I participated in church construction and began to minister to the youth. I then became an elder. In the long run, I found myself being in Yakusha as a pastor. The small church grew up to 70 people before I left. Taking into account his construction experience, church leaders moved Vasily to a church in need of some new construction. I was very, very reluctant, but when I came and saw this house of prayer and saw that it was hidden among other buildings, I knew I had to do something. Worship services in Tomsk can be challenging, but the members are committed. When the power goes off during services, the members share testimonies by the light of their cell phones. The facilities are too small for the number of people who attend. Sabbath school classes are held in a cold and dark basement. In spring we bought a small piece of land, and we have a desire to construct a nice and worthy house of prayer on this place. With a new church building in a better location, Pastor Vasily believes that the church will be strengthened. The 13th Sabbath offering this quarter will help build a new three-story church on this site. The location is easy to find and building plans will allow for growth of the congregation. The stories you're hearing this quarter are from youth and children. It may be freezing here in Siberia, but the youth here are on fire. The church in Tomsk is growing rapidly due to some special efforts on the part of the youth in the church. Pastor Vasily uses community involvement, friendship evangelism, and serious Bible study as a means to reach others. Attendance was good on the opening night of the OK Cafe, where during a special meal, the youth presented skits and stories that were interlaced with the gospel. Two young ladies who were passing by came in for an inexpensive meal and heard the story of Jesus from the young adults of the Tomsk Seventh-day Adventist Church. Siberia is a place where many Christians were exiled and later died. And I think that when Jesus comes, this land will be full with resurrected Christians. But my hope is that living Christians will reside here as well. Home to just over nine million people, Azerbaijan's landmass of 33,774 square miles makes it just slightly smaller than the state of Maine. The history of this country contains conquest, Azerbaijani Khans, and the formation of a republic, and a declaration of independence from the former Soviet Union. In 1828, Azerbaijan became a part of the Russian Empire with the signing of a treaty between Russia and Persia. The country declared a short-lived independence from Russia in 1918 and became the first democratic republic in the Muslim world. Independence came to an end in April 1920 with the arrival of the Red Army. In 1936, it became part of the Soviet Union as a Union Republic. Unrest in the 1980s led to a violent clash between protesters and Russian troops. The deaths of 190 nationalist demonstrators were the catalyst that led to independence once again in August 1991. Although the country is now independent and it is a republic, all freedoms are not readily permitted. It is under this burden that the Azeri people must live and try to worship. Both Christian and Muslim worshipers are at risk. Spies and police work to quash the organized work, limiting meetings, requiring registration of individual churches, and raiding and intimidating pastors and church leaders during worship services. Adventist services have been interrupted, literature has been confiscated, and the pastor and head elders have been fined. 
Mission Sunlight producers were not immune to the government controls either. On a trip to the region in the fall of 2010, they were prevented from entering the country, although they had been informed by the Azerbaijan Embassy in Washington, D.C. that visas could be secured at the airport in Baku. Agents at the airport denied this request. The team was forced to spend 34 hours in the Baku airport before they were able to continue on to Moscow. The following report was made in part during a return trip to the region early in 2011. Tension remained evident with the government authorities during our visit. Our Aziri brothers and sisters are happy to have their story told. We have 830 Adventist members in Azerbaijan. 94% of the people in the Adventist church were from the Muslim religion. God's word is always more powerful than the forces that attempt to keep humans from hearing about the love of Jesus. The same is true in Azerbaijan. There is a hunger that can only be satisfied by feasting on the word of God. Public evangelism can't be done here because it's a Muslim country. It has to be done in small groups or home meetings where they meet in an individual small nucleus and then they can gather together at the church in big groups on Sabbath. In spite of persecution, plans for taking the gospel to those who don't know Jesus must be formed. When official permission is granted, the church in Azerbaijan must be ready to act. We have this building. It's not church owned yet. Deposit funds are drawn from donations and the selling of other land. The church family is ready to move in as soon as the registration is approved. We need 13th Sabbath funds to help us call the church our own. For any religious group, whether it is Christian, Muslim, or Orthodox, to meet without fear or repercussions, it must be registered with the government. Unfortunately, we cannot meet because we don't have an official registration. We have prepared all that is needed. According to the law, if there are 10 founders of the church, they are required to register as a congregation. Unfortunately, it has not yet happened because of the government stalling. Consequences for a meeting without official registration are steep. Members of the Baku churches that do not have official registration must find other ways to worship together. We don't want to reveal many of our secrets. However, with the internet, we are able to keep in touch with emails, webcams, and just calling. And the second way is that we meet in groups. They are planning on meeting in different places and in other churches. In spite of the difficulties, church members remain courageous and see this as a time for faith building. This is a test for members of the church, of big or small churches. It doesn't matter when people come and return empty. They just come and feel comfortable and go back. This situation can test our faith and attitude towards God's word. We have a great God who is worried about the situation. It is all in God's hands, and I am glad that my church is ready to be strong in the end times. Just days after these interviews were recorded, Pastor Ivan was arrested during a church service on Sabbath morning. He was detained for three days and then deported from Azerbaijan, along with his wife and son. You can read more of what has happened to Pastor Uzun and get other Mission Sunlight updates by friending us on Facebook. It is important to note that local Azeri pastors remaining in Azerbaijan are stepping up to fill leadership vacancies as the government persecutes and deports the foreigners who have begun the work. I am happy that we have sisters and brothers around the world who are praying for us. We are grateful to God that He has brought us up to this place, and we have assurance that He will be with us in the future, because now He is with us. How comfortable can we afford to be in our churches and our homes when we know that brothers and sisters in Christ are suffering for the sake of the gospel of Christ. Your generous gift during the 13th Sabbath offering on Sabbath, June 25th, will help our brothers and sisters in Russia and Azerbaijan share Jesus and his love with their friends and neighbors. Reporting from the Transcaucus Union in Baku, Azerbaijan, this is Mission Sunlight.